um, thank you so much for uh, the introduction. Um, so, um, as the chairman uh, said, uh, this work is sponsored by Cyware, and uh, one of the applications that we actually um, target here is high performance inertial uh, sensing from which uh, this work is uh, originated. So, uh, the outline of uh, our presentation will start with an introduction and uh, Following that, uh, we will explain uh, different quadrature cancellation uh, techniques uh, and then we will go to uh, analyzing the impact of the phase error on, these, uh, on the gyroscope bias uh, for each one of the quadrature cancellation techniques used. And following that, uh, I will show some simulation results um, just to back up our analysis uh, here and then we will go to uh, conclusions. So uh, to start uh, by a simple introduction, the quadrature error in, in men, I'm sure uh, most of you are aware, it's uh, some imperfection during fabrication of the men, which causes uh, proof mass misalignment. Uh, and this uh, causes uh, the drive motion to couple into uh, the sense mode, uh, which generates uh, the unwanted quadrature uh, signal. So uh, the good thing about the quadrature signal is that it is 90 degrees phase shifted from the Coriolis signal, which is actually our target. So uh, the challenges uh, that the quadrature uh, error uh, uh, provides, actually it requires a large dynamic range from the front end uh, of the ASIC to, uh, to actually include uh, the quadrature signal uh, and uh, the Coriolis signal and uh, it impacts uh, the bias drift and bias over temperature uh, of the gyro as we will uh, explain. So uh, what are uh, the proposed quadrature cancellation uh, techniques here? Uh, these can be mainly uh, categorized into three main uh, categories. So uh, <laughs> the first one would be uh, synchronous deviation. Here as a quadrature is generated inside the MEMS and is left to propagate through the sense electronics and is cancelled only at the final uh, demodulation. Uh, the second one uh, is what we call an open loop uh, quadrature cancellation technique. So again, the quadrature is left generated inside the MEMS and is cancelled only at the input of the sense electronics using some uh, feedback signal that we will describe later. And the third one here is what we call closed loop. So actually, in this case, the quadrature error is cancelled inside uh, the MEMS itself. So this can be done using two methods or options. Uh, I would say option number one is uh, the feedback signal uh, comes as an AC voltage applied to the sense electrodes. And uh, the second option is a DC voltage that is applied on a specially dedicated uh, quadrature cancellation electrode. Um, so... Uh, now we will discuss each of these uh, three methods and uh, the phase error impact on the gyroscope bias for each one of them. Uh, so starting with the first method, synchronous uh, demodulation. Here uh, the sense signal is simply multiplied by the drive signal, uh, shifted by 90 degrees and then low pass filter to get the gyro output. Uh, so the drive signal is in phase with the quadrature uh, signal and uh, this leads to ideally uh, the cancellation of the quadrature and uh, the Coriolis signal passes. Uh, so simply there is no feedback loop, so no stability requirements, which is good. Um, however, it requires a large dynamic range from the front end of the sense electronics uh, because <coughs> now you, can, you need to accommodate both the Coriolis and the quadrature to pass through this block, which uh, requires more power consumption. And it actually causes uh, low MEMS yield because uh, large quadrature parts uh, will be rejected. Uh, and the last point is that it is sensitive to the phase error as we uh, will show. Uh, so here, uh, we included this new term, which is phi E. It's the phase error uh, due to the electronics and MEMS uh, mismatches, so it's combined. Uh, and we will see uh, what, uh, what is the effect of this uh, phase error. So, uh, the gyro output in this case uh, can be written as omega n, which is the Coriolis, multiplied by cosine phi error, which is ideally zero, so this should be the only output, and omega q, which is the amplitude of the quadrature, multiplied by uh, sine phi e. 
so uh, this is the rate output that we want, and this is the bias error. So um, simplifying and calculating only the zero rate output, uh, we get that the zero rate output equal to the amplitude of the quadrature multiplied by uh, phi error for smaller uh, phi error uh, values. So, uh, okay, uh, one can think that, uh, okay, this is a constant term, I can just subtract the, uh, by post-processing the signal, however, this is not true. Actually, the amplitude of the quadrature and the phase error are both varying, for example, versus temperature. So, uh, differentiating uh, this last equation uh, to, to get the uh, different sources for bias variation would be like this. So the change in the zero output can be written as uh, this equation. Uh, the first term here indicates that if you have a MEMS that where the quadrature is varying a lot, phi error will have uh, a high impact on the variations in the final uh, zero rate output. So the phase should be perfectly trimmed uh, like this. However, this is not practical, of course, because it is changing actually with, uh, with temperature. So a practical example just to illustrate, if you have a, a change in the quadrature of only 10 degrees per second and a phase error of only one degree, the change in the zero rate output will be in the range of 600 degrees per hour, uh, which is, of course, a lot. Uh, the second term here, uh, it actually shows you that, again, for large quadrature, uh, absolute uh, quadrature amplitude, uh, the change in the zero rate output is very sensitive to the phase uh, variation. And this term is actually uh, more severe. So if we take the same practical example, if the quadrature is 100 degrees per second and the change in the phase error is only 0.1 degrees, the change in the zero rate output is 600 degrees per hour. And it is even worse for uh, the quadrature of 500, which is can sometimes be a practical case. So the change in the zero rate output is in the range of 3,000 degrees per hour. This is, of course, uh, very huge. And this method, we can conclude that it is not suitable for large quadrature, and the quadrature should be minimized before uh, demodulation. So this is why we will go and discuss the open loop technique. So um, here, uh, the quadrature is canceled at the input of the sense electronics. So basically what we do is that we take this sense signal, uh, demodulate it using the drive, and pass it through a control loop, okay? and then uh, modulate it once again and feedback this signal to the input of the electronics. So the quadrature will be subtracted here and the sense electronics will be relaxed because it now needs to accommodate only uh, the couriers. However, as you can see, you now have three sources of phase error. Uh, phi E, as we discussed earlier, and phi D, which is the demodulation phase error inside of uh, the uh, quadrature cancellation loop. Ideally, these two should be equal because they originate from the same sources. And one more error, which is phi m, and this is due to the modulation inside the quadrature loop. This is the modulation phase error. So uh, writing again the zero rate output, uh, you will get uh, the first term is the same as the synchronous demodulation case. And this second term, uh, is actually due to the quadrature cancellation loop effect, where k is k here is a loop gain. <clears throat> okay, so um, just to uh, understand the impact of, of this technique or equation, ideally, if the modulation error is zero and phi e equals phi d, so uh, the zero rate output here will be equal to the same expression for the synchronous demodulation, however, divided by k, which is the loop gain. So as you can see, the zero rate output and the variations in the zero rate output are reduced by this value, uh, k. So actually, you should ideally get uh, a better bias error and uh, bias variations are reduced. However, in the practical case where phi m is not equal to zero, and this is real, and even if phi e and phi d are, are zero, so you are back again with a zero rate output that is equal to the amplitude of the quadrature multiplied by this modulation uh, phase error. So again, we are back with the same problem. Any variation in here or in here or large amplitude of the quadrature will cause uh, large zero rate output variation. 
Of course, the loop gain here is lost. It doesn't exist for this term. And we are back with large bias error and bias variations. So now we have to move to the last technique. So actually, uh, uh, both of these are closed loop, as I explained before. This is feedback AC, uh, feedback AC voltage on the sense electrodes. And this one is a DC voltage feedback on dedicated quadrature cancellation electrodes. So as you may have noticed, on the left side, still we have modulation inside the electronics. So the term phi m still exists and will cause the same problems as the open loop technique. However, in this technique, the modulation here is done internally inside the MEMS. So it's done mechanically. So there is no uh, modulation uh, phase error uh, in this uh, case. Uh, so actually, this one should be uh, the best performing uh, method, no modulation phase error uh, by design. Phi error, phi E and phi D should be equal because they have the same origin and therefore uh, this is the most recommended technique for high performance um, gyros. Uh, of course, uh, uh, high, a little bit higher cost uh, in the MEMS design because now you have to design for special electrodes, uh, the quadrature cancellation electrodes. Uh, but eventually targeting high performance, uh, we should do that. So some uh, very quick simulation results just to back up uh, our analysis. So we have done basically a, a MATLAB model included all PI controllers and then second order model. And we have studied the zero rate output variations uh, uh, under these two conditions, quadrature amplitude variation and phase error uh, variations. So for the synchronous demodulation case, this curve shows that if you have a change of 10 degrees per second, the higher the phase error is, the higher the zero rate output change will be. This one as compared to this one, which is the first term as we already explained. And the second uh, part or the second term for the synchronous demediation as well is uh, for delta phi error uh, change. However, the first, uh, the blue line is for the quadrature of 100 dBs and the red one is for a quadrature of 500 dBs. So as you can see, again, it's a large um, variation as we already uh, discussed. So for, for the open loop technique and to understand the ideal case where phi m equal to zero, uh, these are the curves. Uh, please note that the, the scale here is now in milli degrees per second as compared to the previous slide, which was in degrees per second, this one. It was in degrees per second. However, now the change is in milli degrees per second and uh, the zero rate output variations are reduced by a factor of K. However, in the real case where phi m is not equal to zero and for the open loop technique, you see the scale once again goes to the degrees per second uh, change and the loop gain benefit uh, is lost uh, and we're back with large zero rate output variation. So um, to conclude, uh, what we have done so far is that we have studied the bias error equations and we have tried it uh, for different cancellation techniques. For the synchronous demodulation, the bias error is very sensitive to the absolute and the delta phase error, and large quadrature error makes the bias variations even worse. For the open loop and the closed loop AC activation technique, we get one benefit, which is actually relaxing the electronics uh, front end design. However, due to the modulation phase error, we get uh, similar uh, bias error variations. And finally, for the closed loop cancellation using DC activation, this is the highest performance technique in terms of bias. It's immune to the modulation phase error. And the electronics front end is relaxed as well. Uh, this comes, of course, at the expense of special electrodes, uh, more complex and higher cost uh, sensor. So thank you. Uh, I'll be expecting your questions.